Happy Food and Wine Day, everyone. Fritz and the Bear here, and we're back at Epcot for the International Food and Wine Festival. This is the final, final phase of the booth's opening for the festival for the remainder. And it just happens to be in between both of our birthdays when we always do our joint birthday Ooh. celebration. So birthday bear, birthday princess. So we're gonna go try all these new booths, try some favorites. Remember that we are your number one choice in foodie infotainment. She's vegan, I'm not. Let's go scarf down some food. Be sure to enjoy all that the World Showcase has to offer. You heard the girl. Cape Cotter. This is another amazing drink that we get multiple times during the festival. I would say it's a winning drink and a princessity's item. This is the way. Vodka and cranberry juice. It's just a match made in heaven with a little bit of lime squeeze. Perfect. Four and a half out of five Cape Cotters. And the Cape Cotter. I didn't know this is a Cape Cod favorite, it's just the name of the drink. Either way. Cranberry, in the wrong cranberry. I like a good sip of cranberry in the morning. It's not the morning anymore, I don't think. But either way, we're it's outside. Not. Ooh, tart. Very tart. Vodka cranberry? Yeah. Of course. I'm a schoolgirl when it comes to vodka. Probably one of my uh, greatest, greatest alcoholic rivals. Not a good way. But the drink's fine. Three and a half out of five clubs. If you like the tart, you like the citrus, this is for you. Otherwise, there are other cocktails. Thank you. Have a great day. If you thought for an instant I was going to come back to this festival in the sun all day and not partake of the greatest drink to ever grace Epcot, you were dead wrong. I worship at the temple of the swine brine and here I am again to drink of its bodily fluids in Jim Beam as the great mouse said it to be so. This is my church. <sighs> Marinated pig and Jim Beam and apple cider. There is literally nothing better. Five out of five claws. Bird says to this. If you ever see me during food and wine, the one thing I will never turn down, I'm never gonna say no to swine brain. Ever. Just saying. Five out of five boss. It's on a bear test list and always will be. So we have a peach berry hard cider. I think this is my second time, maybe my third time getting this. This is like my go-to drink at the brewing lab. Bold and beautiful. I just love the subtle hints of peach, and it's like it's a really like true cider. It's not too hoppy. It's not too carbonated. It's just the right amount to drink on a hot day like this. Four out of five yeasties. It's a good peach. Probably the king of ciders at this festival. This is one we keep coming back to, even off video. We've had this one so many times now. I've lost count. We always come here. I'm not complaining. It's a good cider. This is why we keep coming back. It's that right amount of like that cider sweetness, but not like feeling like it's overly sweet. And still getting like sort of like that sort of alcohol kick to it, so you don't feel like you're just drinking juice either. It's a good cider. Four to five. This just looks like somebody had way too much fun with the toppings. I do love these tenders though. I'm gonna cut them in half because this is, it's a lot for one bite. So much cheese. You get a big cheesy bite. It totally changes the flavor of the tenders. And that's what I love about this because each bite with the tenders is a different sauce or a different like something on it that just makes you love it. I wish I'd give you like a little cup of ranch. If I give you a little cup of ranch with the meat stuff, so why can't I dip my tendies in ranch? I'm sure I could have asked for extra ranch, I just didn't. 
I love these. Since this is every video that we've done this year for food and wine, I've gotten these tenders. So since these are my my repeat, as much as moussaka, I gotta say it's princess these item and, and this batch I'm gonna give like a four out of five tendies, but like this is a go-to. I really hope that AMC at Disney Springs carries this one day. Because then I'll be ordering these every movie. They definitely did not skip on the tendies and the cheese this time. They are getting whiter and fatter and more covered in veganness. Sort of like me eating on this channel. I would say, if you aren't a blue cheese fan, fake blue cheese, get it without the blue cheese. Tinnies hold up on their own, they don't need blue cheese. And blue cheese is an acquired taste. Even amongst those of us that aren't vegan. It's like eating cheese fungus. It's tasty, I like the heat. I wish there were some other sauces they could rotate in on the, on the vegan tendies. But it continues to be one of the standout vegan dishes this year. Four and a half out of five bucks. Here I am trying another wing flavor here at the Brew Wing Lab. Um, and honestly, all I really want is the unnecessarily spicy wings. They are by far my favorite. The only reason I don't get them more often is because usually we're here to eat a ton of food. And I don't want to blow up my stomach on chicken spicy food at the beginning of the day. So today I got the most boring of flavors, classic buffalo. There isn't a more boring flavor of wing, and for those buffalo fans out there, come for me. It's dull. It's like generic spicy, with not a whole else to add. The orange cardamom, the garlic parmesan, the peanut butter, even the unnecessarily spicy. Interesting, unique flavors. This. It's just meh. But some of you like plain Jane flavors. And for those of you, I'm trying that with the ranch. Buffalo is one of the few flavors that I feel needs the ranch because, well, it's kind of dull. So I'm gonna give it a little dipping. Buttermilk ranch. So the princess can have any, it's not vegan. Okay, I have another person. There's a fair bit of garlic in there. Not bad there. More like a garlic buffalo. I can like that. The heat level, maybe two, two and a half out of 10 on the spice scale. But it's a well-coated buffalo, not horribly creamy, but like enough to stick to the meat. I really don't any complaints. As far as buffalo goes, yes, it's the more dull of the flavors, but you're not doing anything wrong here. So I can really knock you for it. Three out of five bars. Festival favorite for me, for many festivals. It's not here every year, but it's every couple years. Teriyaki Chicken Mart. It's simple, it's basic. It's a grab and go hand food. I absolutely love this thing. I wish you get it all year long. Love. Reminds me of Life on the Islands every single time. Mm. Savory meat filling, sweet bun. Can't go wrong. Five out of five claws. On my beer to list. So good. How many years has this been on your bare necessities list? Three? Three? Here's the lemon slush, the citrus. Not my choice for slush at Epcot. I prefer the sake mist in Japan. This one is very tart. And usually I love the tart and the, li the lemon, but I don't know. I just I just don't vibe on the on the France slush. Maybe it's because it's popular. I don't know. Everything works out. Yeah, I think it's. I'm gonna give it two out of five slushes. This is not the slush I'm looking for. Frozen, lemonade style. Anything lemonade light or the lemonade family lemonade adjacent, I'm gonna drink it. Frozen. That's just a bonus. They offer the bath of this. I would take it. Three and a half at a time.
every time I see goji, I always gotta go for it. It is a Disney family wine. It is from Kurt Russell's Vineyard. Goji is named after his wife, Goldie Hahn. Every single one of his bottles has a name um, that is named after either his wife or his kids or whatever. To Goldie. Oh, that is a very pungent Pinot Noir. Very different tasting from what I'm used to. I really like it though, but it's one of those ones where like you want a small glass, you don't want a bottle because you'll just, you'll be on the floor. I give it four out of five wines. This is what all the wines should strive to be like. That or nurse, 20-ish dollars in a cup. 18. 18. $20. It's $20. Smells like Goldie Hawn. I thought I know what Goldie Hawn smells like. We get goji a lot. The princess loves goji. Uh, this is this is her luxury drink. I'm glad they don't serve it in the parks on a regular. Usually only during festivals, or we, we would have problems. We already have problems when she's on a dinner menu, a table service. So, cheers to Goldie Hawn. Ooh, it's like that aroma, like that. You taste the wine, but it's like the fumes of the wine in the back of the throat for this one. Both refreshing and gives me that nice sort of like full flavor. It's a good one. It's expensive one. It's a good one. Four out of five bucks. Here we have a Pilsner, a lovely little um, light beer. Ugh. Oh, I don't like that. That is very hoppy. This is only for the IPA lovers, even though it's not an IPA. Very hoppy. Um, two out of five hops. Only get it if you are a big beer connoisseur. So here we have a little bit of Pilsner. People will love it. Pilsy. Pilsner. Pilsy. Pilsner. 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 I'm just okay with Pilsner. It depends. It varies. Some of them are okay. Some of them are a bit harsh. Uh, craft beers. Such a wide variety of flavors. This one? Let's see if it chars and chops. Crisp. It reminds me of Heineken in a good way. I don't mind it. It's definitely something that doesn't take a while for me to drink. But I don't hate it. 3.75 out of 5 plus. The North Coast Laguna Baja Vienna Lager. Nice long name. Baja reminds me of California. Laguna reminds me of where I grew up, Laguna Beach. That's my stomping grounds. Cheers to a piece of California. I hope you're good. Not bad. I actually like this beer a lot, more than I expected to. It, it kind of reminds me of a Dunkel. I love Dunkel. I'm gonna give it four out of five um, yeasties. It's good beer, it's not too hoppy. You like me larger. I do like them dark. Very dark. Halloween dark. This dark. Ooh. I'm getting some smoky flavors in this thing, but not like the bonfire beer that they have for flower and garden. This is a uh, quite enjoyable and smooth. I didn't expect it to be so smooth. Oh, it's like the Lando Calrissian of beers. 4.25 out of 5 plus. The spicy impossible sausage. So I guess we're gonna see what impossible is doing to compete with Beyond when it comes to a hot Italian sausage. This dish required two chefs in order to be modified. Um, the polenta does have dairy. I knew it was gonna have dairy. But the sauce reminds us of the sauce from the meatball that they had, um, what was it, Flower and Garden last year? Or not Flower and Garden, Food Wine last year, over by the other side of the park. That's where we, we got it. It was like an impossible booth. Anyway, it's the same sauce, so we think. Let's try this beautifully charred, spicy sausage and see if it's actually spicy. taking the olive off. Too many olives in this. Ooh, a tomato. 
I'll take the tomato. Cheers. Mmm. It tastes like I just had a bowl of spaghetti. The sausage. The sauce is very salty and very olivey. I don't like the sauce. I do appreciate the, the sausage though. The sausage is very interesting. I like that better than um, Beyond Sausage. And it does have a nice little kick to it. I would say like a one and a half out of 10 on the heat scale. Very, 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 very mild. Is it worth $6? I think so, it's a big portion. But I don't think it would proactively come here for a sausage when impossible tendies are right next door. I'm gonna give it a three out of five sausages. It's just average. I kind of wish that it, it was vegan, like standard vegan. Polenta is not hard to make vegan. Most people don't put dairy. Why put dairy in your stuff? You don't need to put dairy, Disney. This grill on this impossible sausages. I will give them props to props too. What's some pretty looking grill marks? Plated quite well, even with the modification. Uh, this dish probably didn't need to be vegetarian. Weird that it worked out that way. But either way, I'm glad they were able to modify it. And when they were actually willing to do that without too much hassle, I'm going to get a spoonful of the olives. Princess hates them anyway. I'm going to leave some tomatoes and try to get as much of this flavor in here as I can. I like what they like salty, sour punch of the olives does in combination with chewing the sausage gives it a really full like flavorful bite i did see how this would taste on top of polenta i think this would be like a very interesting like midday lunch it's weird to me that these booths are going to stick around past food one though all these new booths for today will be here till december 30th this is going to be an easy midday park snack for the rest of the year I'm gonna give it four out of five claws, even with the modification. I like it. I'm, I'm impressed. Here we have the roasted porchetta. It has a lemon parsley salsa verde with a shaved fennel salad, which are these big white pieces you see up here. This is all fennel. And you have this uh, salsa verde over here. This is a huge piece of roasted pork. I was expecting like half this size. This, this boy is massive and roasted so very well. Look at that color on the side of the meats. Not a meat eater. Uh, I apologize ahead of time, but uh, if you are a meat eater, look at that. Look at that. It's a little fatty, but very juicy. That uh, salsa verde is extremely strong. Like, it's almost 60% of the flavor, but you still get a lot of that rose juiciness in that skin. It's like meat potato chips. Like the crispy, all that flavor in it. It's full flavor. You might need a mint after this, because uh, all I taste is that salsa verde. Uh, it's a very good piece of meat. I don't know if I'm gonna fill it down my throat. Do you mind that at the gutter? Some of you won't, that's okay. I like this. Um, 3.75 out of five plus. It's a significant snack. Riesling. This is one of two vegan options available at what is this? Wine and wedge. Wine and wedge. What is the wedge? Because when you hear wine and wedge, I think potato. Bear is telling me cheese. I suppose cheese makes sense, but again, a wedge to me is a potato. Cheers. Very fruity very fruity, like a dessert wine. Extremely sweet. Um, I was initially kind of sad that I didn't get like full versions of this, but now I'm glad that we just got the sample cups because this is like a very, you don't want to drink a lot of this. It's just way too sweet. It kind of reminds me of that like relax wine, if you've ever had that, like, which I, is also a Riesling. So I think you just need some, I, I, I know this is a terrible thing for me to say as a wine person, but it needs ice. Why? Because it's 
hot AF out here and two seconds in this heat and it's warm and you don't want uh, a white wine to be warm it's just that's what we're at here so I'm sorry to all those people that I just made cringe but it needs ice two out of five recently if you're gonna give me these cards which I appreciate I love these cards I need phonetic because Hooked on Phonics does work for me. Selbeck, Oster, Zetling, Sonner, Riesling, Spalice? At least? Close? No? Probably not. Either way. Ooh, I quite like that. Most Rieslings to me are like overly sweet, like super like, I can only drink this for like an after dinner thing or like dessert. This is somewhere in the middle. I could sip this daily, almost. I quite like that, actually. Four to five flaws. I'm gonna have to try to find this one for the house, for science. The Florida Orange Groves Winery, all of their wines are vegan, so whoop whoop for that. Oh God. It tastes like soured cranberry juice. That's terrible. I don't want to drink that again. That was a terrible life choice. That's a 0.5 out of 5. Whatever that is. It's a port? I love ports. This is a terrible port. No. What does Florida know about wine? You don't see us mentioned in wine much. You don't see us on wine labels. That's a port though. I'm sure you do. Somewhere. It smells pretty strong. It smells porky. You know? Is it been on the sour side? But I don't hate it. It's rich. It's very rich. Like uh, somebody directly smashed grapes and in my mouth. It's sort of rich. But the flavor, it's a sipping thing. Definitely don't chug this. Even though you know you're tempted because this is basically shot. But it's grown on me. Three and a half to five claws. I'll drink another one. Hartley Apple Brandy. It's no pear brandy. We're not doing that today. Uh, but Hartley Apple Brandy from Kentucky. You can get a flight of all these drinks at the Wine and Wedges. It's the only one that's not vegan. Uh, so none for the princess, more for me. Unconfirmed. It's unconfirmed vegan. And it says unconfirmed. So it's basically not vegan until we can find otherwise. If you guys find otherwise, or you find something that we don't look up, and we look up all of these drinks to make sure they're, they're at least confirmed vegan for the princess, let us know. We will always be willing to come back and try alcohol. It's not like we don't do that. Ooh. It's as strong as the pear shot, and three times as sweet as that thing is bitter. Whoa, that's a lot. That one's gonna take me a bit. I don't know if I love that. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Oh God, two and a half out of five plus. Here we have the Borson and Fig Balsamic Souffle. That's a lot of very fancy words lined up together. I don't understand what any of that means, except for the fig. Fig isn't vegan, so there's none for the princess. Uh, there's probably some dairy in here as well, so. You vegetarians are good, but the rest of you, not so much. But you have the uh, fig, you have this little tapenade on top. I don't even want to start. I'm just going to cut into it like a pie. Maybe you can get some innard shots. You guys love innards. Nope. Nope. A little, little fig sauce over here. Is it dessert? Is it savory? Honestly, I have no idea. Good fig. Definitely dessert. Very rich. Wow, very spun consistency. My fig tapenade with the fig sauce. It's a whole lot of fig. You don't like fig? Addicting. You're gonna hate this. Addicting. Flavor's good, nice and punchy. I, I couldn't stop watching. It's not like, oh it's served warm, not cold, uh, but not like blazing hot. I kind of like it, the flavors are good. It's like those desserts for us that don't like super sweet desserts. I would give it three and a half out of five plus.
was like top tier until I went on the Disney Wish. And when you go on Disney Cruise Line, apparently, I, I mean, we've only done the Wish. And on the Wish, this is all that they serve you as far as like standard champagne. So I didn't realize that we were getting like top tier champagne every time I got champagne. I should have ordered a lot more of it for $23 one glass. All of Moet Chandon, Moet and Chandon is vegan and it tastes beautiful. If I ate seafood, this would be perfect to pair with a one of the seafood offerings that they have here. But I'm enjoying my liquid diet today. Very nice. I will give it four out of five champagnes. This is the champagne that I'm looking for. It's not $69 glass of of Dom, which is what I actually wanted, but who's gonna miss and who's going to spend $69 on a glass this large of Dom? Please comment and tell me if you do that because then maybe I can tell Bear that people do it and then maybe he'll actually let me do it. Yeah? Yeah? No. So, Moet and Shandon, I props for props to do. I thought Disney was gonna do like a two ounce pour of these very expensive champagnes. They're all five ounces. Even the $69 okay. Dom Perignon is a five ounce pour. So, enjoy every last drop. Don't spill any. Okay. It tastes like $23, whatever that means. Very expensive grape juice. I'm not a champagne connoisseur. We've had our share of it on this channel. I probably would have tasted the same thing on a $13 champagne. Three to five plus. That hurts. Those are lies. Somebody gotta say how it is. They taste differently, damn it. We have the crab and claw cocktail. Very nice presentation. It's definitely more crab than I was expecting to provide. Got these huge claws, you got this nice piece of like roasted lemon, squeeze on top of them. A nice little juice. And you got this little sauce, I dipped them in. Now I'm gonna try to do this bear style. Uh, even though I got a fork and knife, I'm gonna dip this in here. And we're gonna try to suck out the meat. It's true bear wood. I was not affected, in the least. But it's got a good flavor. It's kind of a pain to eat. I said not like I thought I was just gonna give you the meat out of the claw. They did not. It's nice chilled crab. The sauce is like a stone ground mustard base, which goes a lot better with the crab than I thought it would. If you want a treat? A little bit of shell. It's okay. It's not blow your socks off. It's literally just crab in a sauce. Three and a half to five plus. Oh my god, the kitchen cabaret. Talk about a throwback. Crunk. Nemo. Find your favorite character. Right near Soren over California. There's Eve. Yeah. Molly. Stitch. Buzz. Oh, the bee. Merlin. You can blow him to okay, so you're gonna, If you're going to do it, you're going to do it then. We don't talk about the Muppets. I'm just kidding. Huey Dewey Louie. Pluto got a little hundredth on him. Oh, Elliot. The only dragon you care about here. I, well, I mean, there's other dragons, but we don't, we don't talk about Figment. Oh, the new princess. Asha? Asha. Asha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> oh, 
and the B. Rude? Moana! She's got an attitude. Oh, there's all the characters. All the orn birds on there. Who's that? It's Goofy! So that's been us catching up on phase three of the International Food and Wine Festival here at Epcot. We got some new things. And some old things. And some old things. I did not get any more spam masubi. I'm still hurting from last time. I'm not over my heartbreak yet, which is why you didn't see me get more. Don't give me too much guff about it. It might be time to retire the book that we've brought here. The same book every time. It's getting a little worn. Keeping up on our stuff. Uh, if you guys like some of the new things, let us know. Uh, the Swirling Showcase wasn't open. It still says coming soon, both online and on the sign. There were cast members out there all day, so we couldn't have anything to eat anything there anyway because yes. it's mostly ice cream. Not vegan. Yes. But and not lactose intolerant free. Yes, that has been every booth. Those new booths, again, will be around until December 30th. By all means, if you guys are going to be here between now and then, let us know if you plan to check out any of those things. Is there anything else you want to come back and do before then? Of course, since they'll be here for the festival holidays. Uh, let us know in the comments below. If there's anything else you'd like to see us do, that's always a good place to find us. Hit the notification bell. You can see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. And if you don't comment, Bear might yeet himself into the Friendship Five and hurt himself severely. You guys need to help her get better ideas on where to eat me. But you heard the girl. I mean, he's just going to eat himself everywhere anyway. Probably. Food and Wine Festival. <laughs> you been listening to the Epcot Channel.